Hello, I'm glad I get to read a new book to you today. This one is called Arbor Day Square. It's written by Catherine Galbraith and illustrated by Sid Moore. Now, Catherine Galbraith grew up in Michigan with four brothers, one dog, and two birds. She always felt lucky to have four brothers. In fact, she also always felt sorry for girls who only had one or two brothers. Whenever she writes books about boys, there's always a little bit of her brothers in them. And when she wrote a book that included a dog, like this one, she made the dog like her own dog, Bootsy. Mrs. Galbraith began writing books when she was in the second grade. She currently has 15 children's books published, and she wants to write a dozen more. Right now, she lives in Washington State with her husband, Steve, and their dog, Teddy. While she was writing Arbor Day Square, she planted six new trees in her yard. Trees for birds and for beauty and trees for shade. Arbor Day Square. Hmm. Katie takes a deep breath. Everything smells new, she tells Papa and everything does. Their prairie town is growing week by week. Now they have stores with glass windows, a church with a steeple, and a schoolhouse with desks for all 17 students to sit in long rows. Every week, the train brings more people who are eager for land. The train also brings more lumber and logs for houses, stables, fences, and barns. Papa helps pace out to the town square. It will be a gathering place for concerts and socials and speeches. Like the squares back east, the ones back home, the ones they remember as children. Only one thing is missing. Katie and the children know it. The townsfolk and farmers know it too. There are no trees on the prairie. No trees for climbing or for shade. No trees for fruit or warm winter fires. No trees for birds or for beauty. We see Papa taking steps. That's what it means when it says he was pacing out to the town square. He would count how many steps and then turn and do the same number of steps down the other side until he had marked off a square on the grass. Looks like Katie is following him with her doll, doesn't it? At the town meeting, everyone agrees that a proper town, their town, needs trees. Mrs. Johansson passes a basket. Precious nickels, dimes, and quarters tumble in. Jingle, jingle, clink. Katie adds her own six pennies and Papa's silver dollar. When the basket is heavy, Mr. Klein taps out an order over the telegraph lines. Send 15 trees. And there's a picture of the telegraph message that he sent. Dog days tick by. Sunny days, rainy days, windy days when dust devils dance in the road. At last, the telegraph lines tap back. Trees are coming. Two. When the train pulls in, folks hurry to the depot. Babies and dogs come too. Katie skips beside Papa, swinging her bucket and dolly. They're here. Papa, Mr. Zimmerman, and all the O'Briens carefully unload the boxcar, counting as they go. 13, 14, 15. Katie stares at the saplings, spindly and green. They're too little. Don't worry, they'll grow, promises Papa. But Katie isn't sure. Katie and Papa follow the parade of trees to the new town square. Papa and Mr. Carter dig three holes. Dig, swing, scoop. Dig, swing, scoop. Papa plants three small maples. Let me help, Katie says. She gently pats the soil down around each baby tree. 
Under the warm sun, more trees spring up. Someday these oaks will shade the bench, Papa says, and there the elm tree will shelter the bandstand. But Katie isn't sure. Neighbors plant four maples near the church, one apple tree on the corner, and three chestnut trees in the dusty schoolyard. Danny O'Brien leads the bucket brigade. Katie lugs her bucket, too. Cool drinks for thirsty trees. And dogs. In a quiet corner of the square, Papa and Katie dig a hole together. Here they plant a flowering dogwood in memory of Mama. Katie touches the tender leaves. It is very little, but... Now this is our special tree, she whispers. Papa hugs her. Yes, our very special tree. As the sun begins to set, the square bristles and blooms with green. Papa and Katie spread their blanket next to Mama's tree. Katie peeks into the basket. There's plenty of food to share with friends and dogs and Dolly. As old Doc fiddles up the moon, neighbors gather their children and dogs and wave goodnight. Let's do this again next year. And they do. Year after year, they gather in the square for another Arbor Day, a tree planting day, a holiday. Carrying shovels, rakes, and hoes, Katie and Papa help plant trees throughout the town. Trees for climbing and for shade. Trees for fruit and warm winter fires. Trees for birds and for beauty. Every year, Papa laughs and tells Katie, don't worry, honey, they'll grow. And every year, they do. It's another Arbor Day. Neighbors, kids, and dogs hurry to the square. Here comes Katie and Danny O'Brien with their Megan Ann. Katie's Papa, now a grandpa, holds one of Megan's hands. In the square lies a small row of saplings, spindly and green. Katie smiles. One day that willow will sweep the pond, she says, and there the cedar will sweep the sky. Megan shakes her head and Katie laughs. Don't worry, honey, they'll grow. Now let's find your grandma tree. Megan runs across the square. Her family follows just behind. There, Katie spreads out their blanket under the blooming dogwood tree. Robins rustle in the leaves. Sparrows chirp and flutter. Megan peeks into the basket. There's plenty of food to share with friends and dogs and bear. When the moon rises, silver and round, neighbors gather up children and grandchildren and whistle for the dogs. See you here again next year, they call. And they do. Celebrating families, trees, and neighbors. Year after year. And the year after that. The end.